Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks to all of you for being with us. And Ms. Reed, thank you so much for your story um, and for sharing it with us. I think every single one of us has our own personal story, a story of a family member or a friend, and that's why this issue is so critically important. And I have heard from so many folks throughout my district um, with their concerns and the impacts that um, they, they are trying to live through with the high cost of prescription drugs. Um, Dr. Miller, I, I have a constituent, his name is John, he's from Arlington, Washington, who told me how his wife, who's on Medicare, pays $210 every two weeks for her diabetes medications. That adds up to over $5,000 at the end of the year, and that's assuming that John's wife doesn't take any other medications or doesn't um, have any new illnesses that require other medications during the year. Um, so how will the out-of-pocket cap protect seniors like John and his wife? So I think there's a few things that are going on. I mean, obviously an out-of-pocket um, cap, as you accumulate expenditures throughout the course of the year, you'll hit the cap and then you'll stop and your out-of-pocket will be protected. I mean, will end. And so you, as you pay through the year, you'll hit a point and then you'll stop. There's a couple of other things to track on in, in HR3. The inflation index, should also put downward pressure on what you're paying month by month because it, particularly in the insulin market, this is where you have a net price issue and then a list price that is escalating 300% over a decade or whatever the right uh, number is. And so that should also have some effect on what is being paid out of pocket month by month. Thank you. Um, I have another constituent, um, Nancy from Kirkland, who's on Medicare. She told me how her narcolepsy medication seems to jump in price every six months. So also, Dr. Miller, how would the bill prevent price spikes? Well, it, and to the extent that, once again, to the extent that that uh, spike is a list price spike, which is I expect it, it is, the inflation index should have some effect. And, and what's going on there is, is the government will take those dollars and put them, or as I understand HR3, will put those dollars into the catastrophic cap and then your constituent will then eventually hit that cap and the, the, the uh, out-of-pocket will end. Um, so one more question. Um, I have a nurse in my district who has a young son who has hemophilia. Um, her name's Genesis. Um, she spends thousands of dollars on her son's medications every year. He would not survive without these medications. It takes um, every day. Um, but while the drugs that keep her son alive are very expensive, it's a smaller number of patients who need that particular medication. So how does HR's 3's out-of-pocket cap and the inflation rebate that you were talking about in Medicare impact drug prices in private insurance like Genesis has? Okay, uh, two ways that, it, if I'm following your question, two ways I'll, I'll, I'll start off. And there's an indirect effect. So net and list prices do have a relationship to one another. List is growing much more quick, quick, quickly than net, but they do grow together. To the extent that the inflation cap puts downward pressure on prices, that should put downward pressure on prices more broadly into the commercial sector but it's very in indirect. The other way that this bill would have some effect is if the drug, as I understand it, if the drug is part of the negotiation and you come to a negotiated price, that price is required in the commercial uh, insurance market as well. Thank you. Um, Dr. Georges, I have a quick question for you. We are talking about um, coverage for, for vision, and um, I helped introduce legislation with my colleague from Washington, um, Dr. Kim Schreier, to provide coverage in Medicare for routine vision care. I wondered if you could talk briefly about the, the impacts on seniors today for not having routine vision care um, in terms of isolation or other health care issues that result, and the, both the human and the economic cost of that. Yes, Congresswoman. Uh, the problem with uh, decreased uh, vision is it places the person in jeopardy for increased risk for falls uh, because they can't see the obstacles. The other piece that we're finding and the emerging evidence in science is that they, as their vision decreases, their social isolation may increase, and also we're seeing a very rapid cognitive decline, or as we will say, dementia, you know, 
occurring with that population. So it's critical that they're able to see, and it also has a sense of how they feel about who they are and their well-being. Oh, thank you so much, and I yield back, Mr. Chairman.